Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Marhaba to our disciples. Question says, Salam, Shaykh. I was wondering, am I doing dhikr in English? Husna al Muslim, for example. If someone doesn't know Arabic, what do you have to say regarding them making the dhikr from that book in English? Jazakallah khair. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And may Allah reward you well. We say first and foremost, is it all depends on what you mean by dhikr. Making the dhikr that's mandatory in a salah is not like making dhikr that's optional. Making dhikr that's unrestricted is not like the dhikr that's restricted. In other words, the tashahud in a salah is dhikr. If you can't say it in Arabic, then don't say it in English in a salah. Saying subhana rabbi al-azim, subhana rabbi al-ala is dhikr. If you can't say it in Arabic, then don't say it in a salah. Everybody clear on this? Outside of the salah, if you want to say, we say what? Allah's name be praised. How great is Allah? Allah forgive me of my sins. Oh Allah have mercy on my soul. Oh Allah have mercy on Flan. That's dhikr. Oh Allah, how perfect you are. That's dhikr. Allah be praised. Allah's name be praised. That's dhikr. And that's in English. That's permissible. And that's because it's unrestricted. It's unrestricted. But there's some types of dhikr outside of salah that's restricted. Such as the dua for istikhara. That's a specific dua to make. Everybody clear on this? A specific dua to make. The dua to say when you enter a city. The dua when you have an oppressive leader. The dua for someone that's married. The dua for a newborn child. Whatever the case may be. So, the restricted dhikr should be made in Arabic. Unrestricted dhikr can be made in English. The dua and the dhikr in the salah should only be made in Arabic. Uh, and be the next part of ta'ala. And nothing about it is difficult or hard. If you don't know Arabic and you can't learn Arabic, nothing stops you from learning the Roman transliteration. And you can learn the Roman transliteration and listen to a video, listen to an audio book, or have your local huh, your friendly neighborhood imam go over with you. Allahumma, he said what? Hassan Khuluqi. For example, you see what I'm saying to you? Fa'ahsin Khuluqi. Allahumma, you see what I'm saying? You learn it just like that. As this, whatever the case may be, whatever the dua, whatever the thinking that you make, that's just an example. Everybody understand this? So that's my advice. And the ultimate advice, of course, is to learn Arabic. And it's not that hard to learn Arabic. Learning it to talk and speak is different. Learning it to understand it is different. But learning the basic letters, how to connect them, how to read them, what the vowels, the diagonal marks, that's something that's not that difficult. And if you put yourself on a, inshallah, let's say a year program, a two year program, a regiment, it's possible. With the necessary efforts, working in America, stress, children, wife, ex-wife, ex-husband, this and that, baby, mother, son and such, what are the, the, the drama, quote unquote, of America or of the UK or whatever you wherever you live, the day-to-day -day bustle and hustle, driving, traveling, going to the supermarket, children, school, homework, neighbors, this and that, the daily hustle bustle, if you actually gave it 10 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, Three hours a week, it wouldn't hurt you, and you would learn after a year, after six months, after twelve, you know, twelve months, whatever the case may be. So that's that's my advice, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala surely knows best.